And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. We bless your name for what you're doing already. Thank you, Lord, for the revival fire you bring upon the soul of everyone. And we pray that this fire will never die out in Jesus' name. Through every brother here, every sister here, you send this fire to all our local churches, all our local communities, so that, Lord, the fire of revival and evangelism will burn everywhere without being put off in Jesus' name. We're asking, Lord, that all the promises you have for us, your word, they'll be ours. We'll enjoy them. We'll experience them. We'll live in the good of them in Jesus' name. This morning, we're praying that you'll speak to our very hearts. And your word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you very much. We can see. Now, we're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. We're told in verse 39, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. A verse that gives us hope. A verse that gives us encouragement. A verse that makes us to expect a great expectation, a great hope. A great future, a great fullfulness, and a great expectation. This is what encourages us and builds our faith that whatever it is promised in the word of God, the promise is unto you and to your children. And then it says, and to all, not some, not a few, not even many, not even the majority, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And there are times when uh, people do not understand even the prophecies they make, the prophecies they give. And, and we can't blame them. How could they have understood? How could Moses understand all those prophecies that were given? In his own time, from Genesis all through to Deuteronomy, a prophet like unto you, I will raise up unto them. I'll put my word in his mouth, and whosoever shall not hear that prophet, I'll require it of him. And then you come to Isaiah, unto us a child is born. Unto us, we're told, the son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Emmanuel. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. And I'm saying, how could those prophets understand? the depth and the height and the length and the breadth of what they were saying. And when Peter said, the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. I'm sure he did not understand if you understood when God was calling him to go to the house of Cornelius or have said, yes, that is the fulfillment of that prophecy. He would have known that this promise is unto all that are far off. But he thought it could not be to the house of Cornelius, here we are. You know, there are times when we stand here and then we speak the word, the word of the Lord. And it's prophetic. It's revelatory. And then when it comes to the reality that God is saying, here it is now, go with it and perform. And we say, how can this be? But you said it. You said it by inspiration. What you say by the Spirit, you cannot carry out in the flesh. What you understand by the Spirit, it's very, very difficult for you when you're dead after the conference and after the Congress, and you're relaxed, and now you're in the flesh, and you're normal, and you're natural. In that natural state, what God spoke through you, by the Spirit of Revelation, then it becomes difficult to say, not so, Lord. And so, we're going to, again, I want to remind you that God never speaks to your mind, to your brain. Never speaks to your natural self. Never speaks to your tradition. It speaks to your faith. And it speaks in the spirit. 
And so you have to be very, very observant. Now he's telling us here is January, the very first month of the year. And he's telling us this is what will be. And then when you come to the tenth month of the year, from January to October, and then the Lord is now saying, get up. You know, continue. This is what you do. If you are not careful what you said in chapter 2 in February, you're going to say, not so, Lord, in October, in the tenth month. And that's the reason why the Lord is telling us that we need to take minute details and notice of everything the Lord is telling us for the promises unto you. Give me a good amen. amen. And then he says the promises unto children and then the promises unto all that are far off. And we say then that the promise of God is not only for the people who are here or the people that are far off in your church location. Are far off in your community, are far off in all the places, you don't even know them now, but the Lord is going to take you to them. And the promise is unto all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We're looking at Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 49. Luke chapter 24, we're reading from verse 49. Yeah, he's still telling us about that promise. It says in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, And behold, I said, the promise of my Father upon you. The promise that Peter, the apostle, referred to is the promise of the Father. And he said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I send this unto you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. Until, until 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 you will keep on telling until you'll keep on praying until you'll keep on seeking until you'll keep on expecting until you'll keep on knocking at the gate at the door of heaven until you keep on asking and seeking and knocking until you can deal with power from on high have you noticed the people that, you know, they are knocking at the door and knocking at the door. And just a minute before the door is open, they say, it looks like there's nobody there. Then they give up and then they go away. And then they come back. When you come back again, you have to start the fire again. You have to kindle the fire again. You have to start knocking again. Then you start knocking and knocking and knocking. And just about 30 seconds, half a minute, before the door is open, then you say, why is it that this fellow is never answering? Then you go back again. By the time they open the door, you are gone. You come back again, you might be doing that for about 10 times or 12 times or 100 times, just missing it by one minute. But the Lord is saying, don't miss it today. Yeah. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Yeah. That you keep on knocking, keep on tarrying, keep on waiting, and keep on asking the Lord. And you know, sometimes as we come together like this, there are people that say, hey, oh, why is the jest, you know, making us to stand up all this long time? I'm not making you to stand up. I just thought that you wanted something. And then if you want something, you are telling the Lord, you are saying, now if you go to, you know, you go to somebody that is give, going to give you the resources of your life that will make you achieve and make you get everything you want to get in life. Are you going to sit down and then cross your leg and say, I just came to ask whether all these resources that will make me successful and fruitful and make me an achiever, I, I, you're crossing your leg and sitting down and you're doing like this i just want to know whether you are going to give me what will the fellow do to you <laughs> see this one look at this one it's, he came with all his pride but you stand up you stand up and if what you are looking for is more than that minor pain in your leg more than that minor thing you're feeling and you're bombarding heaven for the promise is unto you and to your children, and to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord your God, our God, shall call. And the Lord said, you tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. This is a congress to train and to prepare and to inject you and to impart unto you the power you need for the rest of your life so that your ministry will come to a higher level. It will come to a higher level in Jesus' name. And Jesus said, these are the words of Jesus. He talked about praying and praying and praying and praying and turning and waiting, waiting upon the Lord until ye be a deal with power from on high, enveloped, surrounded, closed, Put inside, immersed with that power, an ocean of power from on high. 
the Lord will do it. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. I read from verse 4. I mean, assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. But, what's the next word? Wait. But wait for the promise of the Father, saith he, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. The Lord, it will not be many days. He will just keep on. He didn't tell them ten days. It became ten days finally. But he didn't tell them. It just said not many, not many days hence. And when the Lord is saying, you know, you will just say some time we're going to pray. Some time we're going to seek the Lord. Some time we're going to give ourselves to the Lord. And we're going to wait. We're going to tarry. Even if we have to prolong the prayer and miss our breakfast a little this that we're going to get the resources of heaven the power from on high and that envelope of anointing from on high is worth all the waiting i said it's worth all the waiting and whatever you have to wait whenever you have to wait and whatever time you have to wait for to get it you are going to get it today everybody say power, power. it is coming in jesus name because I know you will tarry. I said you will tarry. I said you will wait. And when you wait and you get it, nothing will be able to stand before you in Jesus' name. Now, it talks about the power of the Holy Ghost, but all the other promises of God are yes and amen. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 20. For all the promises of God are in him, are ye, that means yes, and in him, amen, so let it be, unto the glory of God by us. It tells us there that all the promise, when it says, all the promises, when it says, and the promises unto you, we can apply this to every promise, the promise of eternal life unto you, to your children, to those that are far off, the promise of cleansing our heart, taking away the Adamic nature and the stony heart, the promises unto you and to your children and to them that are far off. And the promise of healing, the promise is unto you and to your children and to them that are far off. And the promise that every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon, I have given unto you. The promise is unto you and to your children and also to all them that are far off. Every promise of the word of God, everything we read here that God says, I will do this, I will do this, I will do that, that promise is unto you and to all that are far off and the lord will do it for us in jesus name when it says all that means it's universal universal everybody and it's unlimited all the promises even the unusual power of the holy ghost the lord will grant to us in jesus name three things we're going to look at number one desiring god's universal promise all everybody all everybody god giving it to all desiring god's universal promise number two demanding that's asking god's unlimited provision demanding that's asking requesting demanding god's unlimited provision number three declaring god's the gospel with unusual power declaring the gospel with unusual power when you have this power of the holy ghost the lord will turn you and change you to another man you'll not be like you were before things will change i said things will change the declaration of the gospel proclamation of the gospel preaching of the gospel everything will change because you come with new anointing and new power i even pray that before the preaching ends that power will come upon you because it's still possible God has not changed while Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius the Holy Ghost came upon all them that heard the word and all of us here today you are candidates for renewed power renewed anointing and renewed authority coming upon your life in Jesus name let's come to number one let's come to number one designing God's universal promise we're looking at acts of the apostles chapter 2 acts chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 16 over there acts chapter 2 verse 16 the holy ghost came upon the people in the early in the early church you know watching in the upper room and then the people came together because of what they heard and what they saw they thought they were drunk 
And then Peter rose up and said, These people are not drunk. It's just the third hour of the day in verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I'm going to tell you something very important. Look up here, everybody. And you know, sometimes there are people that they read the Bible and they pick, they, they pick just a little thing there. And that little thing is the only thing they think about. But I want to tell you something that this that I read to you now, that Peter just rose up. And I want to tell you that he didn't prepare an outline. He didn't even know that all these uh, thousands of people were gathered together. He didn't know that they would be mocking. He didn't know that this would be their reaction or this would be their response. It, 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 they, they were watching there. They didn't even know it was that moment and that hour, the Holy Ghost and the power will come upon them. But Jesus had said, when that Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth is come, it will Bring to your remembrance everything I have said unto you. That's one thing. Not only that, it will guide you into all truth. And it will show you, reveal things you didn't know, it will reveal it unto you. Yes, I understand. The spoken tongues said, great, wonderful, speaking in tongues. But something greater than speaking in tongues is what you'll find here. Immediately, the people gathered together. It just stood up. And all the words came. Everything you ought to say came. And he said, this is that. Unprepared. Not premeditated. And then the revelation came immediately. That's the Holy Ghost. You know Peter. And you know the, all the times. You know, when Jesus was crucified. And then he said, you are one of them. Fear paralyzed him. Fear made him to forget. All the promises and commitment he made to the Lord. But the Holy Ghost came and powered him. Holy Ghost has come, power has come. Yeah. And then he said, this is that revelation. The Holy Ghost guiding them into all truth and making the appropriate application immediately. And then you find in Acts in verse, verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants. And on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. And they shall, tell me, prophesy. It came to him immediately. When you have this Holy Ghost, the appropriate word will come to you immediately. And then the interpretation will come to you immediately. Everything you have had before, everything you have known before, and you're saying, how can I get that back? I don't have a chance to get my notes now. Everything will come because of the presence of the Holy Ghost. He is the author of this scripture. And because he is the author, he is also the instructor. He is also the interpreter. And he will give us all that we need to know about the scripture. When that Holy Ghost is present and preeminent and prominent in our lives and our ministry. We're looking at Joel. We're looking at where Peter took that from. And without having a copy of the Bible in his hand, he just quoted it just like that. And that's what the Holy Ghost will do. He'll make you keep to the scriptures. It will remind you of the scriptures. It will interpret the scriptures unto you. It will remind you of things you have had before that you are forgetting. And then it will guide you into the application at the proper time to the people at the right time. We're looking at Joel chapter 2, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. It tells us then that the Lord is going to do this, and, and that's what he said. He said, this promise is unto you, and it's unto your children, and it's unto, tell me the rest, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, that promise is coming upon you. I say it's a universal promise. Was it Peter alone that knew that far away in the Old Testament, even Moses, that was his passion, his desire. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 29, Numbers chapter 11, we're reading from verse 29, and David, uh, uh, Moses desired that for the people of God to, and he said, all, everybody, no exception, and you are part of that, everybody. 
is coming upon you today in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 11, verse 29. And Moses said unto him, Enviest thou for my sake, would God, that all, of all the Lord's people 